I still remember how I felt the first time I saw this cutscene from the original Resident Evil at the age of five. I ran out of my room scared to death and I asked my dad to keep playing while I watched him from a safe distance across the room. That was the first time I experienced and enjoyed horror as a genre. Before that, I have never come in contact with any form of horror media ever. That moment, this memory I made and will never forget, started my love for horror games and movies alike. Recently, I played Nightmare of Decay and saw a recreation of this cutscene, and another one in the game Elisa. Nightmare of Decay even puts James Sunderland and Angela from Silent Hill 2 into their game. I found another Silent Hill reference in Visage, or Visage. Visage. There's a room numbered 302. Upon entering it, you find yourself in Henry's apartment from Silent Hill 4. To me, seeing these recreations is just... annoying. To be fair, I would say all the aforementioned titles are pretty good horror games, but when the game that I'm currently fully immersed in is suddenly referencing another game from a different franchise this blatantly, my immersion is gone. Especially when the title it is referencing is not even in the same genre. Now, I understand where this is coming from. The devs may think of it as an expression of love and admiration for the games they grew up with and may have inspired them to become developers themselves in the first place. Or they just think it's funny. I know lots of players who enjoy those references and easter eggs, but it's not just the easter eggs. Oftentimes the style, graphics, or mechanics are straight up ripped off of already successful titles. To me, this seems like some developers don't feel the need to create a unique and original experience because they're a little too obsessed over capitalizing on nostalgia. Don't get me wrong, I don't have issues with following gameplay formulas, I'm a sucker for Souls-likes and Metroidvanias, but I do have a problem with games being so blatant about their inspirational sources because it is quote-unquote safer to get more recognition than the more experimental ones. When I see things like this, I have to think about other examples of indie games that are definitely inspired by successful titles from the past, but take the formula and fuck with it. In a good way. The moment I laid eyes on you, I was... Intrigued. Hollow Knight, Dinkum, Animal Well, just to name a few. These games don't feel like ripoffs, they feel fresh. Hollow Knight takes Castlevania and Dark Souls and adds a world, characters, and gameplay elements that stand completely on their own. That's actually quite nice. Dinkum was made by a single developer that probably looked at Animal Crossing and went, I wish I could do this or that, and then they just did it. Animal Well was also made by only one developer and draws obvious inspirations from Halo 2 and Halo 3, but became something so fresh and unique that it just blew people away. These games were not made with safety in mind. These are games who try themselves out, innovate, and build upon source material in a creative way. Games that make you go, I've never played anything like this before, or I always wanted to play something like this. Crow Country is another great example. It takes the visual style of Final Fantasy VII and just throws that shit into Silent Hill. But it also adds camera controls and creates an insanely detailed environment with engaging and original puzzles. Blasphemous became one of the darkest, grimmest metroidvanias with one of the most intriguing art styles and narratives I have ever experienced in a 2D game. To an extent, it's a mix of a lot of different things, but it is definitely 100% blasphemous. In fact, it is such an original game that it itself is getting ripped off left and right. I would describe these games as confident, games that tell their own unique story and have their own style in terms of look and feel. Now, games that are inspired by other games is not a new thing, obviously. There's countless examples of even bigger studios and AAA titles in the past that do that. But I also understand that without a big budget and less dedicated time available to you, you may be more inclined to fall back on safer methods when developing a game that involve less innovation and clever ideas and still guarantee to draw a lot of eyes to your product. This seems to work especially well when there's been announcements for sequels of already successful titles, but release dates get pushed further and further back. The longer these games are stuck in development hell, the more copycats emerge, and hardcore fans of the series will devour anything that looks even close to the game they are waiting on all this time. I guess what I'm trying to say in this video is... 
When the fuck is Silk Song coming out?